Hello and welcome back to Live.TV, a podcast that dives into exploring values. I'm your host, Ajit Panikar, and I lead an air conditioning company, Nova, and Pure Blue, a tech startup in the air conditioning domain. Every Saturday at 11 a.m., we bring in conversations that go beyond business growth, focusing on the values that fuel it. Let's embark on a journey to uncover our true purpose and how we can grow by enriching our lives. Welcome to Live.TV, where we explore values in life and business. And as always, I have with me Vivek Asrani. Hi, Vivek. How are you doing? Hey, Ajit. Good to be back on your show. How are you doing? Absolutely good, Vivek. To some of you who are joining us for the first time, Vivek Asrani is the driving force behind Camo Faster Company, a trailblazing company in the industrial faster sector. What sets Vivek apart is his deep engagement with exploration of values. It's been over four years he has dedicated, dedicatedly penned his reflections on this topic every week. These insightful thoughts are accessible on his website, vivekasrani.com. Additionally, Vivek has authored the book, One Day at a Time, Reflections from Times of Silence, which further delves into his journey and insights. This thought-provoking read is available on Amazon or on his website, offering readers a chance to engage with his profound understanding of values and their role in both personal and professional lives. Well, in today's episode of Live.EV, we are delving into building endurance. Vivek, let's hear your reflections on building endurance. I think one of the most important things uh, we need as we navigate through life, uh, Ajit. So endurance is clearly at two levels. One is at the physical level and the other is at in the inner level, which is the mental, emotional and intellectual level. I think physical endurance is easy to understand, you know, to build our strength, stamina, what we need to do, why it's important, because we go through that. And all of us are very familiar with the uh, physical aspect of endurance. But true endurance, as we all understand and we know it, is our inner uh, endurance. So what does it really take to build our uh, emotional and intellectual endurance? So first thing, Ajit, is a realistic assessment of our real reality. That where do we really stand and what is the real situation? The one thing that builds our endurance is removing the unrealistic expectations from the situation. Uh, very often we are not honest enough with our assessment. Often we keep thinking of what we want things to be and we don't face reality the way it is. And sometimes, you know, we just have this optimism, which is so unrealistic, you know, and we fool ourselves to say, no, no, I always need to be positive and optimistic, which is absolutely correct, but not at the cost of losing sight of reality. So re making sure that we have a realistic assessment of our reality is very critical to build endurance. The second is acceptance of the situation. When things happen to us, very often we get into the mindset as to why me. We need to shift from why me, which is victim mode, to now what, which is the endurance mode. And when we do that, we start unleashing a certain level of innovation, creativity, inner strength, because we are now feeding energy to the solution rather than, you know, dwell, dwelling upon why is it that something happened to me? The third is recreation. You know, just like a muscle, if you keep exercising a muscle and straining it uh, to a point where it kind of really kind of breaks down, then the muscle, you know, needs rest. Therefore, even in the gym, you know, we exercise, we rotate the muscles we are ex uh, working on. It's the same with the mind. If you're always with one thing all the time, it's going to wear you down and you're just going to have mental fatigue, a breakdown. So therefore, recreation and having, you know, whether it be a sport, 
daily exercise, music, a hobby is important. But the interesting thing about the word recreation is actually it's a combination of two words, recreation. And what builds endurance is that in our spare time or in our time off from what we are dealing with, when we do things that recreates our inner energy and kind of gives us that uh, bit of joy and happiness, it builds our inner uh, endurance. The fourth is trying to always find positive people around you. It's amazing, Ajit, how much of an influence positivity from the outside can have on our inner makeup. Even though people outside are not dealing with our problems, we are dealing with our own problems. But the positive environment in which we find ourselves, you know, it's like a seed and the soil. A great seed needs a nurturing soil. Similarly, we need a very nurturing environment and therefore positive people around us builds uh, endurance. Fifth is knowledge. You know, when we take a step back and revisit the basics of life, that nothing remains forever. Good times don't last forever. Tough times will not. When we realize that if we are faced with a problem, we have the capacity to handle it. When we realize that if something is coming in my life, there is a hidden opportunity and a hidden lesson for me to learn, which is why this is happening to me. That knowledge helps give us a perspective. And that perspective you know, builds our inner uh, endurance. The sixth aspect of building endurance is learning how to let go. You know, imagine running a race with heavy weights tied on your legs. There is no way you're going to be able to run freely. There's no way you're going to be able to run a long distance because you're just going to get bogged down. You're just, you know, getting held back by a heavy weight. It's the same with our emotional weight. When we keep holding on to a hurt, to an anger, to an experience, to a mistake which we've made, to guilt, uh, to shame, to fear, it could be anything. When we hold on, we don't realize that we are putting this invisible weight on ourselves, which is holding us back. And anything that holds us back, Ajit, is coming in the way of our endurance. Because endurance is what is going to sustain and take us forward. So learning to let go is very important. Okay, So I spoke about six things, which is not having unrealistic expectations, accepting the situation, having a recreation in our life, positive people around us, the knowledge of the principles of life, and learning to let go. These are the six things. And the seventh and most important is notwithstanding any of the above six, we need spiritual stamina to build our inner endurance. 10 minutes of sitting in silence in whatever form of whether we believe in our higher, uh, you know, praying to that or in our own way, just being centered in ourselves. You know, it's amazing how much of strength that inner connect builds uh, within us. We don't realize it. And we just, you know, it sounds very simplistic. And you might say, Vivek, you're just simplifying the whole thing. You know, we have major problems in the world we face. And you're saying, sit silent for 10 minutes every day and the problems will disappear. Problems will not disappear. Our ability to handle the problem will become bigger than the problem. So spiritual stamina builds our endurance. Amazing, Vivek. Vivek. Can you share some, you know, have one of the biggest challenges you have faced that tested your endurance? Uh, yeah, I can I can think of two periods in my life uh, in the not so you know, distant past. So one was in 2008 when the world went through this whole global meltdown. If you remember, it uh, hit India somewhere, if I remember right, May, June. So... In June 2008, the first signs of the global meltdown had started coming to India. We were holding inventory and we deal in you know steel products. Steel prices crashed then, give or take about 40%. So we were left held 
holding stocks at a very high price. Demand had collapsed and we saw demand falling off about 40 percent. 14 people from my company left us to join competition in those six months. So with all of this happening, customer retention became a bit of a crisis. Cash flow was a crisis. Profitability was a crisis. And it was one of the toughest situations uh, I had ever faced. We had contracts with our uh, foreign suppliers. And they, in turn, had bought material based on our promise and commitment. And I knew that if we took delivery of that, we would end up making huge losses. But I also knew that if we uh, didn't take delivery and we went back on our commitment, I would lose my long-term reputation and goodwill. We took delivery of every contract that we had signed, uh, you know, at a major loss and a major cost at that point of time. And as a, as a businessman, Ajit, you understand that when something like this happens, the impact remains in the system for months, if not years together. So that was a very trying period for us. But I think what really helped me, if, you, if I look back uh, and I had enough sleepless nights then, was again, we went back to the basics and literally took it one day at a time, one dealer call, one customer call, making sure nobody left us. Went back to the supplier, said, okay, we're taking delivery of all this, but for future contracts, we need your support because we're taking a big hit. Had conversations with the rest of the team internally, scaled down some uh, uh, costs, uh, spent a lot more time in just bring, trying to bring in more business. And within about three to four months or six months, we found from a negative, things were stabilizing and it took us another six months for things to you know, turn around. But the one... The one lesson I learned through all of that was never quit. Just hang in there. Had I lost my nerve, had I just given up and thrown in the towel, uh, I think we would have just had to shut the business. The one thing I learned through that entire experience, no matter how strong the storm, no matter how dark the tunnel, just hang in there and keep moving one step at a time, no matter how small that step is, but just hang in there and you don't know how things turn around in your favor. Amazing. But, um, you know, Vivek, this also, you know, kind of gets me a question as to when you say endurance, you know, and the way you're speaking it like, you know, oh, it's tough times, you know, it's tough times coming and how do we handle these tough times? But it also brings me to a question as to, is there an opportunity in this? Can we take these moments and convert it positively and how do we benefit from this kind of situations you know have you ever looked at these things as you know okay it's, it's, it's something positive that i'm going to gain out of it yes uh, well let's be honest when a challenge comes to us in our life it is not easy to handle it which is why we use the word challenge right uh, and we know that we're going through a difficult period because deep down all of us want to be happy and anything that comes in the way of our happiness and disturbs that inner equilibrium is what we call undesirable, a challenge. Why am I facing this? And you know, why is this happening to me? So to start off with, let's first recognize and accept that a challenge is something that we typically didn't really want in our life. Which is why then we talk about how do I build my endurance to face it and uh, the resilience to uh, you know, uh, make sure that I overcome the challenge. But there's another way of looking at it, Ajit. We want great health. And what do we do for that? We go to the gym. In the gym, what are we doing? We are putting our physical bodies through a challenge. To a level of pain. To a level where we are kind of sometimes, you know, grunting and saying, oh my God, and like really pushing, really pushing. And at the end of that exercise session, where we are pushed to the hilt, what do we say after that hour, hour and a half? Wow, what a great workout I had, right? And we go back to the gym the next morning to be pushed even harder to build muscle 
so that we not only look good, but we feel good. Accept it. So why is it that we don't take the same uh, when challenges come in our life to say, wow, this world is my gymnasium. And every day there is going to be an exercise routine. And this exercise routine is going to be great for my emotional and intellectual strength, which is going to come my way. So I am going to give it my best, push a little more than I could do yesterday. And at the end of the day, sit back and say, wow, you know, uh, we did this. I, I, I'm feeling good about it. And I'm feeling now stronger and I'm looking forward to some uh, challenge uh, tomorrow. So in a positive way, I've done this when we have disrupted status quo in our business and taken on new products, new markets as a challenge, knowing we are stepping out of our comfort zone in terms of sometimes profitability, cash flow, uh, manpower, team and all of that. And after a few weeks or months, uh, looked back and said, wow, what an experience we went through and Great, we're feeling good about this and we're feeling stronger about this. That's one. And very often when something has happened to me, I've sat back and said, look, I may not understand why it's happening to me, but I do have the faith that there is a hidden reason. So I'm not going to sit and think about, again, not why me, but move to now what? And, you know, very often, and I remember when we were doing the largest project, which was setting up a factory in Ambarnath. I went through a period where the size of the project, Ajit, was way beyond what we would have signed up for had we started off in a very uh, intellectual, calculating manner. I'm, I'm not saying we shouldn't, but I'm saying it was one of those things that we just did because it just felt right. Okay, And we reached a point where it really became very heavy. But I just kept telling myself, listen, there is something in this which I'm missing, but let me just keep going. So I took it as a positive, even through the most difficult uh, situations and times uh, in terms of dealing with whether it be the sand mafia, whether dealing with some of the bureaucracies or dealing with uh, major cash flow issues because everything was going into this one big project. But again, I took it as a positive that, look, just as in the gym, I'm building muscle over here, I'm building business muscle and I'm building my own emotional and intellectual muscle and let's see where this lands me. So that's kind of helped me in good stead. Amazing. I hope to all our viewers who have been listening to us have got a better perspective about building, building endurance. But that's the time that we have for today. Uh, these are thought-provoking discussions with some deep insights. And it certainly gives us a lot to think about and balance between exploring values and business growth. I'm going to encourage you not to keep these ideas to yourself. Share this episode with your friends, colleagues, and family and ask them, what do you think? Spark a conversation and see where it leads. And we'd love to hear from you. Join the dialogue on our social media platform. Share your questions, your learnings, and the insights you've gained from this episode. It's through these shared experiences and perspectives that we all grow and learn. So don't hesitate to reach out and contribute to this ongoing conversation. Your voice matters in shaping a more ethically driven business world. Well, that's what we have time for today. Join us next week for another enriching episode of Life.ev, where we continue our exploration into the fascinating world of exploring values in our lives. Vivek, as usual, thank you for these valuable, invaluable contributions you make. We are looking forward to diving deeper into these critical discussions in our next session. So see you next week, where we'll unravel more insights and perspectives that shape our ethical compass. Vivek, thank you very much, as usual. See you next week on Saturday at 11 a.m. Bye, Ajit. Take care. Bye-bye.